What were you pointing at? Dude, it's a vlog style. Just, just, just roll with it. Oh. This, <laughs> this is my editing rig. You guys remember I built this a while back. Custom bent tubing glass reservoir and that awesome pearlidescent uh, Primo Chill View fluid. Unfortunately, over time, it, uh, yeah, it, it, it caused problems. So we're gonna be cleaning up this system today. We're gonna talk about some of this. I mean, look inside the block right there. Yeah, we got some, we got some work to do today. God damn it. Do you wanna be cooler? Do you wanna be more desirable? Well, you're in luck because right now you can own your very own Jay's Two Cent swag and immediately be the cool kid on the block. Max out your sex appeal by following the link down below. This has dust filters too and still. So dust fil filters, as you can see, are not like the end all be all. They're not the bee's knees. Get this guy off here. Careful, careful. Whoa, shit. So as you can see, we've got an air bubble right here in the top and I think the flow is starting to be impeded because this started falling out a while ago. I noticed it would mix up when I first turned it on and then turned it off, it would kind of settle. Now it's just completely settled. And I think we might be getting some, uh, I, it might, it's probably in the radiators, it's probably in the reservoir, obviously it's in the reservoir. You can clearly see it's in the pump, that powdery stuff. So let's talk about the Primo Chill View for a second before we get into cleaning this because when I did the first video about that with the green stuff we put into Nick's system, uh, remember the video I showed it actually like cleaned the blocks because uh, I don't know, maybe it was slightly abrasive. Not, it didn't hurt the tubes in any way, but the blocks got shiny. I've had many conversations with Primo Chill since then because this system obviously failed, but the Threadripper system back here, and you guys, I know you guys are gonna be like, well, it just sits there. No, we turn that on all the time and mix it up. It's still as good as day one. There's so many variables. There's so many things that could have possibly contaminated that. And this was a brand new loop. It was never used with any other fluid. It didn't interfere with any other fluids. The radiator or the, the rad was cleaned. So I don't know why it did that, but we need to handle it today because we notice now when I'm rendering videos, this thing gets hot. And it's a 14 or it's a 16 core 32 thread. It's a 7960X. Uh, so yeah, time to clean this up, drain it and see exactly what we get. This is the computercleaner.com vacuum I got it on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. So I'm loosening the very top. Normally I would come in here and just release the top screw on the reservoir, uh, but I can't really get in there. So, because this particular, and Nick, you're gonna, or uh, Phil, you're probably gonna have to jump, but this particular radiator, because it's so thick, has fittings on both sides of it. So I can just loosen up one of these fittings to let air into the loop. And then as soon as I do that, if Phil shows the reservoir here, you will see it all just start to pour straight out. And there it goes. Because now we have air being going in, replacing the fluid going out. It's physics, folks. Fluid out has to equal air in and vice versa. That's why it's hard to fill and hard to drain if you don't have a proper drain set up and an inlet for air. Now I've had a lot of conversations with Primo Chill about these types of problems. They're aware of this problem, I've showed them pictures of it, and they assure me that they are constantly changing and tweaking the formula to try and make it more general public friendly. The problem is there is a huge variance in metal quality in various components, and they have no control over that. They have no control over the quality of metal being used in the radiators, in the, the blocks, in the pumps. And the same goes for Mayhems, when I had the Mayhems problems. They were dealing with the same thing. So I took off the two fittings on top of my EK radiator, and these are like a black chrome, where normally they're a very shiny chrome. In fact, let me compare, let me show, compare this to the other ones I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. and she's like, <laughs> okay. Whoa, okay, you ready? Yeah, I cut the edge of the thing. So this is normally what the plugs look like, but this particular radiator had like a dark, like a dark chrome or a black chrome. So this is typically what I see with EK. Uh, but for whatever reason, this one had a dark, the dark chrome. And if we flip it over, look at that. So you can see this was clearly the inlet where it was flowing into that side of the radiator. This is clearly the outlet. So it hits this plug first and then doesn't hit this one as much as it's exiting the radiator. 
As you can see, because, I mean, these are, I guess these are copper, whatever this is, completely ate away. In fact, it looks like even the O-ring was starting to get eaten away. This completely ate away the coating. So I think these might have been the problem right here. It's very possible. Because it's touching the coolant, it's gonna be affecting the coolant as it goes by, and then over time, which is why it failed slowly, I think these are the problem. And unfortunately now, this is the result. It's in the reservoir, it's in the tubes, it's in the block, it's in the radiator. I can see it when I looked inside. Unfortunately, the radiator is just, it looks like this in there. Time to open up this block and inspect uh, the damage. I'm gonna take the fittings off too. I expect to see <clears throat> gunk and build up under the fitting threads. This has happened to me but with the pastels as well. Actually, that one's not too bad. But look at that, that is, that is nasty. Ew. Oh, yeah, see that one there? Oh, it's like stuck together. I've never had this not just fall apart when I undo the screws. That's like, it's like glued together with all the crud. Oh. Uh, oh, uh. <laughs> oh, look at there. Look at this. Oh man. You can see why the flow was being impeded. <laughs> Fun fact, this is actually the bottom of a thread ripper. This is the bottom of a thread ripper uh, block that I put an Intel bracket hey, on. Thumb, That's why it's bigger. Yeah, I know. I see my thumb. <laughs> look at this. Oh man. So this is just a bowl of hot water. And we are gonna, it, I mean, it, look how quickly it like dissolves though. I mean, there's that. Fortunately, it seems like it's cleaning off real nicely, but look at that, like the, all the nickel plating is like gone there. You see that? It's, it's like scraping off of my finger though. I think it's a layer. Or oh, that's just rust. No, it won't rust, it's copper. Co rust doesn't, copper doesn't rust. So I'm trying to get off all this buildup right here. This is buildup. It's not actually corroding the nickel. It's shiny nickel underneath there. So yeah, I'm just trying to get as much of this off as I can. Look how dirty it got like in the threads there though. Like why did it, out. it's like, why did it get dirty in the threads? Okay, and we are gonna be legit using toothpaste on this to clean this because of its abrasive properties. We're trying to scrape off any of the buildup. Toothpaste is like an amazing life hack. Have you ever noticed that? Like toothpaste is good for everything. And it smells nice. It smells better than the crap that this smelled like when we first brought it out. So we pretty much got all the discoloration gone. You're gonna see there's still some you know, nickel discoloration. That's normal. But the big deal is it's smooth now when I touch it. Before it was like gritty. It felt like a thousand grit sandpaper. And that just gives you a rough surface for crap to collect to. But now it's super smooth. So life hack, you can clean your blocks with Crest 3D White. Again with the toothpaste. Oh, listen to that grit. That's what we want though. Clean, baby, clean. But it worked. Do you see that? Toothpaste, guys, life hack. So I just did that one time with the toothpaste. This one has not been, this one's really dirty. So let me show you now. Just take the toothpaste, just put a little bit in the hole. It looks really dirty. Like this toothpaste is very dirty looking, but whatever, that's fine. So take the screw that you use to, you know, seal up. You're gonna hear all this grit because that's the toothpaste doing its thing. And then just, just sort of work it in there. Like that, go all the way to the end, bottom out, come back, bottom out, come back, and then just, just kind of work it like that. And then you can actually see the dirt like makes its way out and it's stuck to the toothpaste now. Rinse it. And then that's what it looks like just after one, one time. So this is the first time I've ever done this, but hey, it's working. So there it is, all nice and clean. All the brown is gone, all the gunk is gone. We were able to reuse this block. I mean, you can clean just about anything as long as nothing is like corroded and you're good. And I'm not even kidding, this is the first time I have used toothpaste. I mean, I just thought to myself, like, life hack articles always talk about the amazing cleaning properties of toothpaste. So, link in the description below. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. There's really a link in the description below. Check it out. Not a sponsor.
All right, so it's back together. I actually ended up using the Mayhem's XT, uh, XT1 clear with blue dye in there. So it actually looks the same as the other stuff did after it all fell out. But I had to do a complete disassembly. I was hoping I could just do a flush. In fact, it was even advertised that view would just flush with uh, simple distilled water. Clearly that wasn't happening. This stuff solidified. Still not entirely sure what caused it. I think it might've been those fittings. I don't know. As you saw, it, two of the same fittings, two very different colors, both of them reacted in some way. So that brings up a very important topic here about just the, the variation of metal quality between different parts and manufacturers. And even you could have two of the same part from the same manufacturer and have different variances. In fact, I've got two different radiators from the same company that are two different shades of black because again, it's different cycles, it's, it's different uh, runs or you know, uh, production runs maybe even different factories, who knows? So anyway, this is not as perfectly clean as it should have been. To be honest, the radiator, although I was using my pressurized pump to force a lot of pressure through it, that looks dirty, I know, to try and force out anything that might've been stuck in there, and then we reversed it and went the other direction, so that way it wasn't just flowing one way. We got pretty much uh, all the junk out. There's still tiny, tiny little bits that we've noticed as we fill this up are kind of moving but they've already stopped moving. So they probably recollected in the radiator, but I should have used a cleaner for like 24 hours, the acidic stuff and let it eat it all up. But this is my editing rig. Had to get it back up and running. So yeah, do as I say, not as I do. Use the proper cleaning methods, whether it be Blitz Pro cleaning or the you know system prep stuff, whatever method you wanna use. But we're up and running and I'm glad that I was able to get this fixed. So it seems like the bad luck I have with fluid continues which is why I am back to a clear fluid. So anyway, there's that. Right now we're idling at 28C. And what's uh, significant about that is even when, when I would turn on the system without load, right? Cause it just turned on, it's gonna sort of warm up over time. The, when it was upstairs and it was all clogged like it was, the second I would turn it on, it was like 37C. And then when we were doing, the reason why we even did this is because when we would hit render on a video, it would just immediately go up to like 88C, where normally it would sit in like the 50s and 60s. It's a 16 core CPU that is overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. So yeah, the problems were obviously very, very noticeable. And as you guys saw with the block, it's a good thing I didn't wait any longer because we were about to probably completely obstruct our flow. Yeah, we decided to make a video about this because I had a lot of comments come my way. Jay, you said the Primo Chill view was good. Why, my system clogged. I have to remember that I was working with pre-production stuff and obviously there's a lot of variables on a, on a fluid like that. Plus, I didn't know that there was an eight hour restriction on that stuff, which is why it was in here because that came out later. Don't use it for longer than eight hours. This system saw a lot of temp and a lot of use. So there was probably not a good system to put it in. That's why those types of fluids are great for like show systems and show builds, but whatever. For the sake of, I was almost gonna put just an AIO in here, but I know you guys would have shot me if I did. So I cleaned out the loop entirely, did a complete rebuild on this in less than a day. And uh, yeah, I'm tired, it's raining. We're gonna go, at least we're up and running. Thanks for watching guys. And you know, if any problems come up in the future, I will bring it up and I will talk about it. But this system saw about six months of consistent use and that's what happened in about six months. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Ha <laughs> ha